to Financial Stockholm. I'm Christopher Crystal, and uh, today is November 21st. It's Monday, uh, 21st of November 2022. And uh, what we've seen over the weekend in Sweden and what we're seeing today is, uh, of course, the surprise of winter. So uh, even though this is a cold weather climate and uh, historically has evolved with snow, uh, the regions are shocked by the snow. Now, we did have a lot of snow over the weekend, but we started getting it on Saturday. So you would think by Monday, everything would be cleared away. And uh, that's not the case. Uh, the Stockholm uh, traffic and uh, Swedish traffic have told many people to stay at home if they can avoid it. Uh, they were sending out messages over the weekend that say, hey, don't go out. Uh, be careful or think about when you're driving and think about how you're dressed. Be prepared. Be ready. Uh, so... It's a, uh, now we, we had a, a good amount of snow. Uh, it came up to the chest of my dog and he's a, a, a decent sized black lab uh, or a family lab. So he's not as big as a hunting lab, but um, he was enjoying the snow and I enjoyed the snow and we, we took advantage of the fireplace. But uh, most in Stockholm are apparently working from home. There's traffic chaos and uh, people are driving. And then there's a number of accidents being reported by the police. Uh, but that was the, uh, the, the theme for the weekend. So, of course, many people in Sweden were staying at home and reading and writing. And uh, uh, many were shocked that uh, Donald Trump would be allowed back onto Twitter. That was a big focus in Sweden. There was a lot of discussion about it. Uh, and to be honest, it's a, um, it's a non-event for Swedes in reality, uh, if you don't believe in free press. And the whole point of it was, should Donald Trump be banned? Or do you have a system of free press and do you ban your political opponents? Um, whether or not you like Donald Trump as a candidate, and that's immaterial, and uh, we can debate about the, uh, the ability for him to be candidate or uh, whether he's a suitable candidate. Um, but the point is he was a president and he is a candidate after announcing his candidacy. And so um, he should have a platform unless you don't believe in free speech. Uh, so uh, that was a lot of discussion in Sweden, more about, you know, banning him, not more about the free speech and uh, the principle of free speech. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, since we're talking politics, the uh, Swedish press is out to uh, uh, talk about the disunion within the parties. And uh, really, this is kind of like a building up as a pre-hype for why the current coalition uh, maybe would get removed or really isn't acting in a way that uh, is uh, meeting with uh, voter satisfaction. And while I would say it is difficult right now to assess and say what this coalition has done and what they will be doing uh, and what of their campaign promises will they meet, I think it's a little premature to start saying that it's a complete total mess. Yeah. And that, that's been fueled by the Swedish Democrat Party, which has its problems, it's had a number of members that have been accused of being Nazis, and then it's had a few of its members uh, in relatively high-level positions that were actually espouting uh, Nazi eugenic kind of uh, ideology. So uh, unless they really address this issue, they will continue to be under criticism for that. However, uh, the Socialist uh, Party is casting sand uh, at the moderate party saying, hey, it's been 100 days and there's no nuclear power. Uh, it's been 100 days and you still haven't been to built a nuclear power plant. Now it takes on average, I think about six years. You have a usual one year study process, survey process, and then you have uh, another year for the building of the implementation of how this is gonna go about. And then you start the building. And if you're gonna do a SMR, uh, the best estimates I've seen is that it takes about three years. On average, you're looking at six years. So this is in line with 2030. But if you're not gonna build a power plant, and, and by the way, to build a coal plant, you're looking at similar process and coal would produce carbon monoxide. Uh, it would produce sulfide, uh, sulfate uh, dioxide. Um, and uh, you get a number of uh, other kind of noxious gases being produced. You, you certainly will get some methane and uh, you'll also get things like argon, um, you'll get uh, a, a lot of the sulfur, you'll get some silver even, um, and you really kind of uh, pollute the air quality and make it bad. So building coal, which is what Germany has been doing to supplement their power needs, is very bad. 
uh, and, and burning the coal is uh, very bad. I mean, I, I don't disagree with that. I think, you know, putting those particulates up in the air, it's not so good for children. It's not good for the elderly, nor is it good for anybody with any breathing issues and uh, really should be a last resort and, and only used if needed. Um, but <clears throat> that's, uh, that's not what they're doing. And it was the Social Democrats and the Mayo Party that did start closing down more of the nuclear plants and uh, not asking to build more. And they gave commentary this weekend talking about uh, the energy system in Sweden and saying we need to work on a greener future without saying we need to work on uh, reestablishing our nuclear power. And um, you can have the debate about nuclear power, but at present it offers the best solution in terms of the need for power and the emission standards that they're looking at, uh, as well as the newer generations are using fuels that can be actually reused, uh, uh, or if you had to dispose of them, you're able to quote unquote safely dispose of them buried deep underground, or you'd be able to reuse them in the newer reactors of today. So um, that's, uh, that's the situation on the energy. There's no issue yet on, uh, or resolution yet on when the uh, uh, money would be paid back to the taxpayers who consume the energy from uh, up until September, October of this year. And there's still a question there. And then of course, in our power rich region of the North, they had some power issues over the weekend. This is tied to the snow and the cold. We got hit with a cold snap to uh, boost along with the snow. So they're seeing record high prices and I'm sure this will factor in on the payment. And uh, the question then becomes more and more or increasingly, when will the consumers get the money? Uh, you have some Swedish economists who are very big Keynesian economists and like to use things as printing presses, uh, saying that if you give this money back, you'll only fuel the inflation. And, uh, and I think that's a little hard to say that most of the people who would need the money back are people who are questioning whether they'll be able to actually survive this winter. And so um, I think that's a... Uh, it's a very unusual argument, um, and it's also a uh, kind of very Keynesian argument. And um, uh, you're seeing the housing prices are crashing in Sweden. Uh, so if you're looking for uh, apartments or houses in Sweden, this is a good time to start looking. Uh, it doesn't look like we're at the bottom of the market. We're still waiting on what Stefan Ingas is going to, to do with the interest rates in Sweden. And uh, we have the, uh, the issue with the amortization or the amount that you have to put into the purchase price. Uh, is, is relatively stable, but we're not yet set on what happens with the rates. Uh, for companies, uh, they, you know, the Swedish press wasn't really discussing much there. They were more discussing about the politics. It was a politics weekend. And we're moving into Christmas. So uh, this weekend will, of course, uh, be a shorter time period on the markets because Thursday is Thanksgiving in the U.S. Uh, so the market will be closed on Thursday, and I believe Friday will be a half day. Uh, if I recall correctly, that's how it used to work. And um, the, uh, so we'll see a shorter week and we'll see more volatility because you'll see lighter volumes on the Friday uh, or that's traditionally the way it was. And, uh, and in Sweden, we're moving into our advent calendar. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here. But um, if you're stuck at home, hopefully you get to go out in the snow uh, uh, after you've looked at the markets and figured out your trading opportunities and what you're uh, looking at to make money in the market with either shorts or uh, going long-term trading strategies. But fundamentally, we, we still haven't seen anything clear yet because as I uh, mentioned last week, we had the COP27 concluding. And I think the major issue out of the COP27 was this uh, climate remuneration fund. And with the climate remuneration fund, that would be for the developed nations to pay into a fund to give money to the countries that they've determined are damaged by climate disasters. Now, uh, what's interesting about that is China, which did not participate in the COP27 in presence, uh, is considered to be a developing nation, not a developed nation. So the developed nations, i.e. Europe and the US and Canada, uh, would be paying into this fund. And the developing nations like China would then be receiving the money. However, the single largest polluter in the world today with the emissions that they're discussing would be China. China is building more coal power plants uh, as is India. 
because they, they believe in an energy rich system in order to grow their economy. And that's what's required in growing an economy. Uh, so it would be, it's a question of, will the countries in Africa where you're seeing flooding or where you're seeing droughts, would these be the beneficiaries or would you see a beneficiary funnel over to countries like China? So it's uh, politically, the, this agreement would have to be ratified by the United States Congress if the United States were to join it. And uh, it doesn't look like with the current breakup in the uh, House and Senate uh, that you would see that going through. It didn't go through last time. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but the, that's, that's the bulk of what we're seeing out of uh, Europe over the weekend. And so uh, wish you happy trading uh, and uh, success in the markets. And thank you very much. Bye.